Welcome back to another swimming analysis video. I got some footage that I'm going to take a look at for the first time and I'm going to give you my feedback. So here we go. So, uh, some uh, interesting stuff that we see here. Okay, so let's get some obvious stuff out of the way. So, uh, as you can see in the footage, uh, this gentleman here is practicing his front crawl in the shallow water, which is a good idea. Okay, now, uh, a lot of you are thinking, oh, I should start practicing in the deep end. Uh, no. If you're a beginner, 99% of your sessions should be based in the shallow water. Okay, you don't need deep water in order to perform strokes such as front crawl or breast stroke. Okay, so the depth of the water does not matter. Okay, if you're in ankle deep water, like in like uh, those zero entry uh, pools or at a beach, yeah, that might be a problem. You might need to go further deeper. But in this case, he's at the proper depth. So some other things that I noticed is he's wearing clear goggles. Good. That is a good choice, actually. Clear goggles give you the most accurate perception of what you're seeing in the water. Okay, a lot of people, they opt for uh, chrome or amber swimming goggles because it looks cool and their favorite Olympian swimmers wear them and they, they look futuristic and all that. But if, if you are swimming for the first time, you want the most accurate image of the water that you're swimming in. To me, clear goggles are like the clear windshield of a car, okay? Uh, some people choose to drive with the tinted windshields. I don't know, in some, some countries. To me, it's too dark, and especially when there's not enough light outside. And the same thing goes with goggles, okay? If you can't, if you're not really good at swimming yet and you want the best accurate image of the water, then go for clear goggles. He's not wearing jammers, as you can see, but he's wearing form-fitted trunks, which I like. You don't need to wear jammers and you definitely don't need to wear a Speedo if you're a guy. I know a lot of people advocate, oh, I should wear a Speedo because it helps me swim faster in the water, that is a lie, okay? I don't, I never wear a Speedo to the pool because it's just too revealing and it makes me look like a stripper. I find that compression shorts, AKA jammers, are the best option for me. But for this gentleman, wearing form-fitted swimming trunks are just as good. So the first thing that I notice, and this is very common by the way, okay? So don't feel ashamed if your phone call looks like this is that his legs are obviously not on the surface of the water. Okay, so how do we fix sinking legs when we do front crawl? That's the first thing we need to tackle in this equation, okay? When we do front crawl, we, we work backwards. We start with the legs and then we move up towards the hips and then the arms and then the breathing and all that, okay? So let's start with the legs. For legs, uh, we usually try to kick along the surface of the water and we don't Spank the water, pow, 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 because that requires too much energy. And we don't kick underneath the water like he's doing because it's, it feels like you're kicking in quicksand. It's just gonna tire your, your legs out. Okay, so we want the best of both worlds and the best of both worlds is splashing, flutter kicking along the surface of the water. Okay, and the best way you can tell that you're, you're kicking properly are two things, okay? First is what you see or what other people see. If you see consistent white water showing along the surface of the water from your kicks, you're doing proper flutter kick, all right? If you see water, white water, and then disappear, white water, disappear, that means your kicking is not consistent, okay? It should look like, like the white water of the rapids in your local river, okay? It should be that consistent. Now, the second thing that you can tell that you're doing proper flutter kick is by the sound. And this is why it's so important to practice flutter kicks in the water, front kicking drills, okay? Where we isolate our body 
not using our arms, just our legs to get from one end of the pool to the other. Okay, those are those are called front kicking drills, and the way we do those drills is by holding out a kickboard. Okay, so you grab a kickboard, invest in your own kickboard, by the way, because the, the local pool kickboards suck. They invest, they buy bulk and cheap, and those those kickboards really are not good. Okay, especially when you're an adult, they're more for kids. Okay, they're they're too small. Okay, so the best way to get a good or find out which is a good kickboard is by the size and the weight, okay? The bigger and heavier the kickboard, the more it will hold you up as an adult, okay? That's why kids, they can get, get away with small kickboards. But for you as an adult, buy a thick and heavy kickboard. And if you wanna know what kind of swim gear I recommend as for adult swimmers, just click the links down below. Okay, so now we got our kickboard. We bring it to the local pool. We hold it out with our arms and we try to swim from one end of the pool to the other just using our legs alone and our front kicking technique. So how do we do it? So when you're doing it, you should feel like you're wearing high heels, okay? I've said this in other videos. When you're front kicking, you want to extend your body as tall as possible, okay? Like you're a supermodel on the runway, okay? With their arms sticking up in the air, okay? You want to be the tallest version of yourself in a horizontal position, okay? You want to look like a missile, basically, okay? So your toes are always pointed, but not to the point where you're constantly flexing your muscles in order to point your toes. No, you just want to point your toes as if you're wearing high heels, okay? The high heels do all the work for you, okay? They, they point your toes downwards, but you don't flex in order to keep that position, do you? So, so imagine that you're wearing high heels as a guy and you're flutter kicking and your friend sees the white water that's consistently showing and for you as a swimmer if you listen very carefully you'll hear the sound of gong 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 it sounds like your washing machine it sounds like the engine of a tugboat if you listen very carefully to that sound that's the sound. If you're trying to make a gung 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 or gung 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 overexpend your your energy when it comes to front kicking that's the problem what I see with a lot of people that do front kicking is that when they do front kicking they're moving forward which is good that's a good sign that's working I've seen some swimmers work move backwards when they front kick seriously but when you're moving forward it feels like you're not making enough progress you're going really slow but again when you do front crawl you're like 80 to 90 percent of the work is done by your arms Okay, your feet are just there to stabilize your body and keep your lower half up along the surface so you look more hydrodynamic, okay? So the hips obviously are really low and that could be due to two things, all right? So one is that, yes, it's obviously his kicking technique, okay? So before you even attempt front crawl like this guy, try to put it all together, you need to break it apart all right so before you can do front crawl you must graduate from front kicking first all right so do as much front kicking drills as possible before you attempt a front crawl okay it's like trying to do like a double backflip before mastering a backflip okay in this case a double backflip is a front crawl and a backflip is front kicking, all right? So keep that in mind. Master your front kicking first. And when you front kick with the kickboard and you, you're, you're following my advice, you're looking for the white water and you, you're consistently making gong, 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 gong. The next thing you wanna do is try to elevate your hips, all right? And you, when you ele elevate your hips, you're gonna feel a little bit of air. And that means your butt is out of the water, a little bit. Your butt doesn't have to be totally out of the water. 
And when you kick, you want to pretend like you're waddling your butt like a duck. I know it's silly, but the hips do all the work when it comes to front kicking. Okay, you should be looking like this when you're front kicking. This is what I look like when I front kick. Down, go, 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 go. It's fun. If you're into salsa and dance, this is what it looks like when you're front kicking in the water. Gung, 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 all right? Use your hips. Don't be stiff. Don't let your knees or your ankles do all the work. That's inefficient. Anybody knows that when you throw a kick, whether it's martial arts, soccer, or swimming, the power comes from the hips, okay? Go, 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 okay? So your hips will rise naturally if you keep practicing your front kicking drills with the kickboard. So that's a lot uh, that he needs to do, but take it step by step, okay? So to recap, spend the next month or two just doing front kicking drills, holding a kickboard, okay? And work on getting that consistent white water and consistent gunk, 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 gunk sound and waddling like a duck to move your hips. That would be the first month or two. Month three, four, five, six should be spent on his breathing technique, which should be odd numbers. One, two, three, breathe. One, two, three, breathe. Okay, so he can balance both sides of his body. And his arms, uh, we can tackle that later on. But I'm talking about the main parts that he needs to work on, okay? And then finally, his head position. He can't look forward, because he's, he's gonna crank his neck. Look down with your eyeballs facing forward from time to time to check where you're swimming. And look down at the indicators of your pool. Okay, so he's got a lot of homework to do, but I think he can do it, all right, if he applies these techniques. And I wish him the best of luck. So uh, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, or better yet, join our Facebook group. I know you haven't joined. You should join it. The link is down below, okay? So thanks for watching. My name's Justin. Take care. Love you. Bye.